Um, so we are recording. And again, thank you, Jen, for coming out. And uh, you can take it away. OK, thank you. It, it's good to meet you. It's good to see you. Um, just really quickly, I, I'm a lawyer and a consultant. I've been in the field of developing affordable housing and mostly special needs housing for a really long time. Um, and this meeting came about because since the pandemic started and I'm trying to do something useful with my time, um, I've been volunteering with Rivka at the Kosher Food Bank. And I've met her daughter Bracha and she and I have been talking and she's like, and she knows that I work in this area and she just threw out there, we need more housing for people with disabilities in the community. Um, and that's a lot of what I do. If there aren't very many groups, you probably know who develop housing um, for people with developmental disabilities. And I've worked with a few, mostly one that's called Medina Creative Housing. And I mean, you know, playing around with the idea of if we go forward with this project, bringing them into it, but no commitment to them. It's just, they've got some really good models that um, you are welcome to go out and see. I'm happy to meet anyone out there. Um, right now, there are about half a dozen small apartment communities in Medina County. We just finished construction with one in Middleburg Heights and we're working on something in Pepper Pike. And I'll, I'll back up and I'll tell you the kind of housing that I work on. And then I'm open for questions at any time, just feel to jump in, feel free to jump in. Um, I mostly am working to develop small apartment communities, all for people with, with developmental disabilities. And partly because of the people that we've sort of targeted, the interest, but more importantly, because where the fund, what the funding is available for, all of this housing is apartments for independent living with supports, which still can accommodate a wide range of disabilities, um, but it does not include any group homes. There's almost no money um, to actually develop those other than, well, other than through the State Department of Developmental Disabilities and that's not really grant money or it's, it's different. So what I do is I combine the sources that are available of funds through the state, the county um, and some foundations. And I'm able to put together enough funds to develop the housing exclusively with grants. And then up until a number of years ago, the federal government had a program where they came up with a rent subsidy to maintain the, the housing as well as developmental or develop money, development money. That's no longer available. So we work with housing authorities to get section eight, which is a rental assistance as well as through boards of developmental disabilities. So the idea is to make it very affordable, but the housing is not just to create a, a room to sleep in. Um, it's a whole community. So everyone has a small apartment with community space tied in with all sorts of programming. Um, Medina Creative Housing has I don't know, over a dozen um, small businesses where they provide vocational training and employment opportunities, not just for their residents, but for others in the community. And the piece that really is, is, is the difficult one, I can get the funds, I can build the housing, ultimately we can get a rent subsidy, but it's the direct care and I'm sure you as parents are aware of that issue. So, and I don't know whether your children have Medicaid waivers or how prevalent that would be among people interested in this type of housing. Um, it is an important component unless your child, you either have the resources to fund the services, the direct care, 
or your child doesn't need a lot of assistance. So what I've envisioned is finding a site and I've seen a few in the Heights area, um, which is, would be accessible to shopping, ed entertainment, um, recreation, um, religious facilities, whatever the residents would be interested in so that it's within walking distance or if they're in a wheelchair within rolling distance and developing, building a new small apartment complex and then tying it in with these additional services. Um, and I keep going back to the models I work with, with Medina Creative Housing, um, where all the pieces have come together. And what is so wonderful about it is that we create a small community that expands into the larger community, but provides a whole social network for the people who live there. Um, they really thrive. They, there's a lot of social interaction. Uh, people achieve higher levels of independence than their families even thought possible. And they really get involved in a lot of activities, both within the apartment complex and beyond it. Um, so that's what I would love to see happen somewhere in the Heights. Um, the other type of housing that Creative Housing and I have built is it's still apartments, but um, it's more like an expanded group home. And again, you know, I'm interested in hearing the, the types of housing supports that you feel would be appropriate for your children. But with this, um, again, to get the, fi the financing, what we did is create small efficiencies. So I think there are eight units in this one building. So everyone has a bedroom and bathroom and very small kitchenette. And it's all built around common space. There's a community kitchen, a dining room, um, living room, uh, a game area. And that works out very well also. Um, and there's a, there it's more of a feeling of a shared home though. In the other ones, people can have their own privacy and then in community space or going in and out of other people's apartments, but there is some community space is where they gather so that it's only part of their days rather than the entire day that they're at home where they feel like they're more part of a larger group. Um, the funding that's available is, it is competitive. I've been very successful in getting it, but I have to warn you, it's competitive. We've got to go to a number of different sources and they don't all, they're not all coordinated in terms of the timing. Although right now the sources become available, the competition opens up for most of them sometime between the spring and the end of the summer. So it means going to three or four different places, putting together the proposals, getting the funding, making sure that the program meets all the various uh, criteria and the regulations. And one thing that, I mean, I'm very aware of is I would like to focus this for a Jewish community. That's where the need is. That's I mean, targeting the, the Yachad population. But using government money, the program technically is available to anyone, but lots of groups with subpopulations target their marketing to their smaller population. So it's perfectly legitimate um, to create not another layer of, of networking, of um, community. It's fine to target the information, relay the information, disseminate it among people within the Jewish community. Um, one thing that goes along well with this kind of housing, and 
again, I, I mean, some of the other providers in town offer this. Creative housing is very good at providing life skills training. So either before moving into an apartment and certainly once you're in it, being able to have access to programming in how to maintain your house, how to shop, how to keep it clean, how to prepare your meals. Um, it's not just dropping people off in their homes and letting them fend for themselves. It's all sorts of ongoing support. So those are some of the basic elements and I'm not sure if I just threw them all out and it doesn't make sense, but I, I mean, I'd like to stop there and just get some kind of feedback. Um, you know, what you think would work for your kids, what you're looking for to provide for them. I'd like to say something. I'm, I'm so happy that you mentioned Medina because my daughter's been involved in their programs for the last three years. She does the creative transitions. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, and and I love I love their programming. I I visited many times. Oh, I'm so and glad. We were even on the waiting list for the Pepper Pike home, but then because of cultural and religious issues, we decided it wasn't right. You know, being on it's like like the nuns are taking care of the kids and everything. It just it just didn't seem right for an Orthodox girl and it's not near any synagogues. But so I think it would be like amazing to have that kind of program in the Jewish community. I can vouch for it. So <laughs> well thank you. Yeah. yeah I, so is she at Tri C? Uh, she she was taking classes at Tri C. She did not do well when it switched to um, to when she couldn't have her her aid with her and everything and switched yeah. to virtual. So now she's just doing virtual Medina transitions. So it's only like an hour and a half a day, and hopefully when hopefully she can go back after she gets her second shot. So. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, and it's the transitions residential building that is this hybrid between efficiency apartments and uh, more like a dorm, uh, right. you know, kind right. of a, a, yeah. Now, I, I understand in their program, especially the one in Pepper Pike, that people just bought their own, um, they're, they bought their own apartment or a small house or whatever that was, but, or we're planning well, it, to do that. How, how does, I mean, would it, would you need funding for every home or could those people who could afford it buy into it and get funding for the others or how does that work? Well, and Pepper Pike, is different because we're not using any grant money. So even though the organization will maintain ownership, um, families are paying 100% of the cost of building it. Mm -hmm. And then um, they're also paying a, a monthly fee in addition to the you know, small rent that the residents will pay. So that's 100% private pay. And it is another option, um, unless that's the, pre the preference um, in the community, it's kind of- I doubt I, it. I, I it either like to- It preference for some people, but it might not be the preference. Um, and it's possible to have them combined so that we could do, you know, 12 apartments that are completely paid for with grants and affordable to anyone. But if we can't get an, and you know, the grant money is very limited and that's why we've done the private pay. Yeah. Um, Creative Housing has a list of, I don't know, 400 or so people for 50 apartments. Yeah. People move there and they stay for life. So being on the waiting list doesn't do you any good, right, which right. is why we, we included private pay housing as well. It could, the goal was to be able to do it a lot more quickly as well as have people avoid a waiting list. In fact, yeah. it's taking longer than any other project, but um, 
that's because of the location and it's on the Ursuline campus and we've right. had to negotiate with the sisters and then the city is causing zoning issues. Yeah. Um, so you're saying something that you're, you're doing now, you're designing, you, it would be short, you go on a waiting list, but it's not as complicated or I, I kind of got lost on that. What you're saying. Well, for housing that you develop with government funding um, and the rent is, you know, 30% of whatever the resident makes. So if, if your child gets $10,000 a year with various subsidies or whatever, 30% of that would go to pay rent. And of course that's not enough to operate the facility. So there's, an, there's a rent subsidy. Uh -huh. So the family and the resident have zero to minimal financial obligations. And of course there's great demand for that kind of housing. So once it's filled up, there's yeah. a waiting list which you know can end up being very long, but no one has any chance of getting on if, if people are going to move in and stay there for twenty or forty or fifty years. Right, right. So the way to avoid a waiting list is if you have the financial resources mm -hmm. to pay okay. for the construction of a project. And then, um, yeah, I'm sorry. No, I was, I was going to say, um, is it? My daughter's going to be turning sixteen. So normally, I know it takes years and years to get things to get on this. Is it is it a a good time to get involved in it, or should I wait a little bit longer? And what age do you actually take kids in, or young adults? Um, really, whenever they graduate from high school is when they become okay. eligible. So if she's going to graduate at eighteen, or if it, well, actually probably 18 would work even if she's still in high school. I don't know that mm -hmm. any of them. Yeah, probably buildings. Would, yeah. 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 So I'm always an optimist when I start a new project and I lay out what needs to be done and how long it should take in the best case scenario. So if I tell you this, we start right now that people should be able to move in in a year and a half or two years add at least a year or two to that. So now mm -hmm. is a good time to get started. Yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Sounds lovely. Well, Jen, can you uh, step back a little bit instead of talking about the programs and the grants and things like that, can you describe what a typical day would be like for someone who lives in uh, one of these projects? Well, it's very individual. So if someone has a job or participates in some kind of program or volunteer work or goes to school, um, person would make all decisions or, you know, with the family, what kind of activities to get involved in. Um, there, there's no, there's, um, you know, typical eight to five or whatever management on site generally. So it's not 24 seven management, although someone is always on call and that's to oversee the general operations of the facility. And there's, you know, these groups that manage this type of housing um, typically are like family with the residents. So there's, there's a lot of interaction, but the management does not provide the direct care. So whatever level of direct care each individual needs and the family provides for, that's what's involved. Um, so there may be a lot of, you know, depending on how many people are at home during the day or involved in activities on site or nearby, there may be more or fewer people around during the day. And then what Creative Housing does, every evening they offer some kind of programming, um, either on site, like a game night, bringing someone in to give some kind of educational program, a field trip, something like that. Not required, it's just, if you want to attend, you can, but 
what's so wonderful about going to these apartment complexes is seeing how close the residents become as friends and the interactions. So, you know, it's something going to the evening events is something they look forward to. Um, they may have like a potluck dinner or something, but on a daily basis, everyone is responsible with his or her caregiver to the extent that the caregiver is necessary to, you know, prepare their own meals. Um, so it's, it's a mix and it depends on the desires and the needs of the residents, how much private time each person has and how much group time. That earlier, help? earlier you talked about a project with a waiting list that uh, waiting lists don't mean much because a typical resident might live there for 20 or 30 or 40 years, right. which is absolutely right. Uh, I'm not going to be alive 20 or 30 or 40 years from now. How is this going to help me die happy? That's the whole goal. Um, the most important thing is to have management in place and the structure in place to maintain that management or comparable management indefinitely. Um, to know that people who are knowledgeable, who are capable who are trained to work with the residents are there. Um, and that's really a benefit of having an, a, a building, a complex that's exclusively for people with similar needs. I mean, I can get on my soapbox and talk about the public policy over the last 10 years or so has been integrate, although I disagree with that word, it's dispersed people with disabilities into the community. And they don't, you don't get that assurance that they will have the support that they need. Um, in a project like this with a long-term owner manager, um, nonprofit that's in place for no reason other than best care available, that's how you can know that your your child is going to have uh, the care and the nourishing environment that you want you know even past when you're going to be around from my point of view that's where you start your plan for what it is that we're trying to accomplish here yep. it's not so much let's let's build an apartment it's right. what do we have to do to give the best chance for our children after we're not around. Yep. Because uh, I mean, right now I manage every moment of my son's life. And that's, n that's fine for now, but that's not gonna last very long. And what we need is, uh, is an arrangement where we know that our, our kids can grow up and have a satisfying life how that comes about, you can fill in the details, but step one is what do we have to do to make our children happy? Right, and I mean, you know, whether you go with a, provi a housing provider like Creative Housing or one of the other couple that are really good out there, they've been around for a long time They've proven their commitment to their residents, to their clients, and you've got to be comfortable with them before you go further. I agree. I have a question. If you have a kid who has a Medicaid waiver, do you still have to look for a provider, say like JFSA, or if you're in the Mendina, or one of these other kind of structures that you're talking about, do, can you get a provider through them? Or does, is everybody on their own to find their own providers? Or is there like a provider network within the housing? Um, creative Housing has its own prov provider operation. Oh. So you can go with them, okay. but 
you know, it's state regulation and federal mandate that um, a housing provider cannot require any of their residents to use them if they also have to offer direct care. Oh, okay. So you could go with them or you could go with someone else. If you've got a long-term provider you're happy with, yeah. you keep you keep them. Yeah, I see. Okay, Sharon, I wanna pipe in on that. A few years ago, I sat down for a meeting with the director of uh, Ohio's Developmental Disabilities down in Columbus. And he addressed that specific question that the state would give a blessing to a project provided that every resident gave the appearance of being independent. So each resident had to have her own key to the door. Uh, each resident had to, had to pick their own provider which I think is nonsense, but that's coming from the state, is that the resident has the choice of accepting or rejecting a particular provider. So what, they, what the state wants is everybody to be independent as to the extent that that is possible. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. But also if you're the guardian, I, I think they also, the state probably also means that the guardian picks a provider too, I'm sure. Yeah. Not all the regulations are based on good po public policy. Yeah. And I've got to pick and choose my fights. Right, right. Mm. Ben, thank you so much. I didn't know if there was anything else that anybody wanted to add. I was just um, going to open it up a few more minutes to see if anybody else had any questions for you. But I did want, if it's okay with you, Jen, in our chat here, I can put your number. Do you prefer yeah, your please. Okay. So this is really just what I think Jen had hoped would be the start of a conversation. Um, but I will share her number um, in this chat now for an year. Um, and you can. Um, you know, you're talking about visiting the sites, right? Wasn't that an option? Yeah, um, Sharon, have you, oh, sorry about my dog. Sharon, have you seen any of the housing at Creative Housing? I haven't seen the housing, at, you know, where they keep the horses. I've seen um, other areas, but no, I haven't actually seen the actual housing. Um, they have visitors all the time. Yeah. So if anyone, is interested in going, I'm happy to meet anyone there. And Diane, the executive director, does a great tour. Uh, just to give you an idea of the type of housing that's available and, and the types of programming that can be added. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I, I know Jen, Diane yeah. too. I, I, I definitely like to do that um, okay. at some point, but I don't know, you Mark, 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 anybody else? Jenny yeah, mentioned sure. that you had uh, uh, you were looking at some some uh, opportunities on the east side. What what sort of things are you looking at? You mean the the facility, the locations, for the site. location, the the scope. Uh, you know, what what sort of things do you have in mind? Um, I would love to see and. I'd love to see an area where we there is enough land to build new housing, and then whether there's some existing structure or we build um, for things like a life skills center. I mean, I have looked at one place that has a parking lot that is not used much. I'd love to see that for housing, and then they've got a pretty large building, they have a commercial kitchen. So I'm thinking, well, we can certainly use part of that as a training kitchen, how, so people can have it set up like a, just a large home kitchen and people learn how to use it, but also there, could, and there's a lot of other space with a courtyard and I just see it as being a great kosher ca a cafe. So it would teach people, you know, whether they lived in the apartments or they're just from the community, 
so many different skills in baking and cooking and serving and taking orders and have a great community gathering place. Um, it's amazing, yeah. Jen, are you looking, are you open to, I mean, such beginning stages and there isn't even like a, a site, yeah. you know, that's set in stone, but would you be willing to, I don't know if Art Mark was asking, we can keep his eyes open, I don't know, but would you be willing to hear about leads or if- Oh, absolutely, right. yes, I, okay. yes. <laughs> you know, and I think it seems like you, once you see the space, you have some criteria, but it seems like once you see a space, you can be inspired. This one had the kitchen, so you would use it, utilize it. If one didn't and you were starting from the ground up, it would be a different thing, but it almost, right. almost let the, it inspire you to, to do what it's meant to do there. But, um, but yeah, since, so if people have leads or know of properties or areas or I guess sites even um, in these in these communities, in these neighborhoods, uh, like I said, in the Cuyahoga uh, East, um, that would be good. Um, I'd put your number here. Two one six five seven seven six six two five is a good way to reach Jen. Um, Have you talked with uh, with any of the city managers, economic development directors, and people like that? Um, I haven't recently. I did have an idea a few years ago in Cleveland Heights and talked to Richard Wong, who is the now retired planning director and learned that he has a sister with developmental disability. So he was really interested and very supportive, um, but I haven't yet. Are, have, are you, do you know that some of the people involved or have uh, ideas? I've, I've talked with people in the past, but you know, with the lockdown and stuff, I haven't done anything. But over the last 10 years, I've talked to the mayor of South Euclid and the mayor of Shaker Heights and the economic development director at University Heights. And no one has, has uh, brushed me off, but uh, I, haven't, I, haven't, uh, I haven't continued to push. Well, I just was in a meeting with, I haven't had a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with the new Cleveland Heights planning director. I mean, as it turns out, I didn't even realize it till I was in the meeting and saw him. He's orthodox. So I thought that was interesting too. Um, you know, there, there's so much need, it's hard for the communities not to want to support, you know, quality housing but for this population. Well, I mean, uh, my conversation in, in South Euclid, again, this was a while back, so I, and I never did a follow-up, but the things that I got from it was that the mayor thought that uh, a housing project like this was good for the community because in South Euclid, there are a lot of distressed properties. And so she was interested in something like this because it would improve property values for everyone and mm -hmm. be a source of jobs. Yeah. And, uh, so she was quite, quite pleased with the project of this nature. Now it turns out the area that she was thinking of ended up being taken over by that Walmart place. Oh, yeah. the Oakwood Commons? Walmart. The, it was uh, the good, Mayfield Country Club uh, went out of business, and so that golf Oakwood. course. Yeah. Oakwood. Oakwood. Yeah. yeah Oakwood. The, the golf All right. Course. Well, Oakwood I mean, maybe someone, maybe someone, one of you has a good connection. When it was sold, and when Hebrew Academy started doing, you know, had their plans, and I knew their plans did not extend all the way up to where Walmart is get in touch with them and ask if they would be willing to sell two, three acres as, and be the, so that this housing could be the buffer between what Hebrew Academy is doing and then that very commercial area. But I didn't get very far. But, but the issue is, I mean, that, that's the same thing as a pepper pike place for if you're Orthodox, there's no synagogues nearby. It's not, I mean, I know the Hebrew Academy is there, but it's, um, they're not there on Shabbat. I mean, it would be better if there were some some place within walking distance of the actual community, don't you think? And I'm looking. 
I, I mean, I, I have my eye on one place, but, you know, I hate to say anything because it's so premature. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, sure. We still don't even know who would do it. I mean, who would want to be involved? And Yeah. But I did clock it from there to a center of the Orthodox community, and it was three quarters of a mile driving. Oh, oh. Oh. And walking, you could take shortcuts. <laughs> oh, so that's not that bad. Oh, that's interesting. I, I thought it would be longer. It, maybe it's closer to Cleveland Heights. Maybe that's it. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I was thinking of it from the Beachwood community. Mm -hmm. Sharon, if, you're, uh, if the place that was built was had enough residents to have a large enough community center to hold its own services on Shabbat, would that satisfy your need? I kind of doubt that it would. I, I, I don't know, I don't know. You're just trying to get you to think uh, about this in yeah, a different way. Yeah. Have the service come to the, to the building. Yeah. I, I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> I I just kind of like the idea of having someplace that that really is within the Orthodox community as a preference. I mean, if it's impossible, it's impossible. But as a preference, I think that would be a better way to go. I I agree. I think it's a lovely idea, and also getting involved in the community. But um, I, I need to go in a little bit, but I would be interested, maybe Sharon and I, we could, and anybody else who would like to maybe make an appointment to see some of the other places that you have mentioned to visit. Okay. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Okay, so I've um, shared Ben's number in the chat and they can also, Mrs. Schlossberg, you could email me or text me and I can get you her number. Um, she's been very communicative and gracious with her time. Thank you so much, Jen. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. it's my pleasure. I really, I, I really want to be able to expand. You know, the opportunities. It's amazing. It's like a, it's uh, for me. It's just, uh, it's an absolute miracle to to see somebody who's interested in doing this and right, you know, right. something I've thought about for a long time because that would be my goal for my daughter is to have her independence, but not you know, but still in the community would be amazing. Right. Yeah. And I will say, Jen, I had um, a handful of other people interested, whether it wasn't a good time or a good night, which is why I recorded it. Um, so there, there are more. These parents represent um, many others, I think, um, who are interested, who are, you know, willing to um, explore all these options with you and, you know, support you and things like that. So um, there are more. Um, I do want to thank the people that did show, come tonight and hear you um, in starting this conversation, which hopefully is the beginning of, you know, many beautiful uh, conversations forward. Can, can <laughs> I, I ask another, well, can I ask one more question? Um, when you're talking about the housing, is, is it also an opportunity, something that you look into of training? Because there isn't really a program uh, you know, we have the, the my, my daughter's in a, a Jewish school, but there isn't a program for like, what is it called, CVAC or something like that. Is it something that would be, is this a different, like a whole different category that you're speaking no. of? Uh -huh. No, I see it all as one. I mean, it's okay. not enough just to have a house. You've got to have all the elements of your life made yeah. available. So training, jobs, recreation, everything. Wonderful. Yeah, I'd mentioned to Jen, Mr. Schlossberg, that, um, that I knew, you know, she was asking me about housing and I knew that vocation was something that has been a hot topic that, you know, Sharon and Mark yeah. and I have explored yeah. also. And um, but I felt it was all together, like Mark was saying, just, just representing future and representing stability and representing um, things to, you know, be dealt with and things to take care of and things to be confident in. Uh, for future. So in that category, they're both this, they're us, you know, um, but yeah. yeah, we did talk more and focus more on, I think just in terms of sequentially in, in your life, you know, you get the job and then 
move out or whatever. But um, but that's good to know, Jen, also that it's sort of all one picture. Wonderful, great vision. Thank you. Okay. Well, okay. feel free to get in touch with me anytime. I will. I will. I will. Okay. Yes. Yes. I will too. Yeah. Whether it's thank you so much. Asking more questions, but um, yeah, thank you all very much. Stay warm. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you, okay. Thank you, everyone. Sit okay. down, please. So if that works for you with the information for tomorrow. Okay. Sharon, I sent it to you. Thank you so much, Jen. Have a good Thank you. Bye, Mark. Good night. We'll be in touch. Okay. Hi, I didn't see her, but I. Bye. She's she's here. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.